Jane Gray. Please enjoy, relax. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to The Tonight Show, everybody. <laughs> it is a, uh, it's a special night because for the first time since the pandemic, our audience is no longer required to wear a mask. <laughs> Yeah, so you better laugh, because I can see who isn't. Uh, <laughs> what an exciting time this is. We're maskless, fully vaccinated, and it's officially summer. Official. <laughs> Great. That's right, kids are pumped that school is over while their parents are staring blankly at a wall like, I thought we had more time. <laughs> yeah, and it's not just the start of summer, you guys. It's also Amazon Prime Day. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Today, instead of buying stuff we don't need, we buy stuff we don't need at a slightly lower price. <laughs> I don't know what an immersion blender is, but yeah, let's look at the price on that. How am I going to make my coffee if I don't have an immersion blender? <laughs> Prime Day is actually a two-day event. Oh. Yeah. yeah, Amazon is basically your annoying friend who plans a birthday weekend. <laughs> <laughs> you only get one day, Carl. Yep, Amazon has deals on outdoor cameras, digital recorders, and night vision binoculars. And with that much spying capability, you're basically Amazon. <laughs> you're at least Facebook. <laughs> Some news from Washington this weekend. Kim Jong-un made his first statement about the Biden administration, saying that he's prepared for both dialogue and confrontation. <laughs> That's right, Kim Jong-un just challenged Biden to a rap battle. Uh, <laughs> Yep, Kim Jong-un says that he's prepared for both dialogue and confrontation. It's the same thing my aunt says when she walks into a TJ Maxx. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> well, guys, the Olympics are almost here, and today organizers announced that venues will be at 50% capacity. Oh. <laughs> That's right, 50%, which means only four people will be allowed to watch fencing instead of the normal eight. <laughs> Did they start with the hand up here? Sure, why not? Yeah. Eventually, I've seen Eventually this. Eventually, it's a, a But does it start like this, maybe? Yeah, maybe that. Maybe that. That looks good. You look good. This is, I look like a fencer there. Yeah. A fencer being, of stolen being jewelry. Being cocky? Yeah. <laughs> Gotta put pinky out on the sword. Yeah, I throw the pinky out. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, you know, class. There you go. Class. Pure class. <laughs> pinky out on the sword. Yeah. Like that? Maybe yeah. like that? Yeah, like a flourish. Like a, oh, like a yeah. floor? Like a jazz hands. Yeah, there you go. There you go. This is how you fence? Yeah. <laughs> That's how you fence? Yeah. <laughs> On God. Let's get into this here. On God. Yeah. Uh, also, they also said fans uh, aren't allowed to cheer. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Although they say that at the beginning of every graduation, and parents are still like, Thomas! Yeah! <laughs> Tommy did it! It's my boy, Tommy! <laughs> well, soccer superstar Cristiano Ronaldo just became the first person in the world to hit 300 million followers on Instagram. Ooh. It's a pretty big deal, and now a lot of people are reaching out to congratulate him. For example, Lionel Messi said, what an incredible achievement, way to go. <laughs> Dwayne The Rock Johnson said, congrats, pal, but watch your back, I'm coming for you. <laughs> Then Ronaldo himself had this to say. He said, I can't believe it. Thank you so much for the support. <laughs> it didn't stop there. That, remember that statue of him? Oh, yeah, I knew it. Yeah. I knew it. Oh, no, it didn't. The it bronze didn't statue him. of Ronaldo reached out and really? said, Really? Irma Gerd, you're never <laughs> win. <laughs> oh, no. After that, Ariana Grande said, I hope I can get the 300 million soon. And the statue of Ronaldo was like, Murder! I want to be popular. <laughs> to be popular. Popular? Then this plaque of Elvis Presley spoke up and said, "Yours, please follow me on Instagram." <laughs> and finally, this statue of Lucille Ball said, "Mer handle is at real Lucille Barrel. Hashtag Fellow Burke. Hashtag Influencer." <laughs> They're all very excited. Good for him. Three hundred million. Uh, listen to this. I saw that NASA is struggling to fix a computer on the Hubble Space Telescope that was developed in the 1980s. Yep. 
It's from the 80s, so the manual only says, remove the circuit board and blow on it. <laughs> and finally, a grocery store in Wisconsin is offering customers color-coded bracelets to show their social distancing comfort levels. Yeah, red means no contact, yellow means elbows only, and green means open mouth kiss. <laughs> Let's get to some news that just came out that Trump's former bodyguard is the latest member of the Trump Organization to be investigated by New York prosecutors. And get this, the guy's name is, and I'm not making this up, the guy's name is Matthew Calamari. <laughs> Uh, can we take a look at Matthew Calamari? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Name had to be yeah, Matthew yeah. Calamari. Looks like a bouncer at Olive Garden. Uh, <laughs> no word yet on Trump's other bodyguards, Johnny Meatballs, Vinnie Calzone, <laughs> and Sammy Shrimp Scampi. Uh, hey. oh. <laughs> Sammy Shrimp Scampi, that's a very good. <laughs> Well, guys, the White House says that the country will need a few extra weeks to hit President Biden's goal of 70% vaccination by July 4th. That's right, the White House wants to hit its goal so badly, instead of fireworks, they're just going to shoot a bunch of Pfizer needles into the sky. <laughs> Thank you! That's beautiful. That's the finale. I think that's the finale now. <laughs> no, no, no. It's just wait. No, no, I know. That's it. Wait, wait, wait. That's it for now. <laughs> it was Matthew Calamari. <laughs> According to projections, uh, we'll be around 68% uh, by July 4th. Uh, don't worry, though. Today... <laughs> today, Biden changed the name of his plan to Operation Close Enough. <laughs> well, some TV news last night was yet another emotional episode of The Bachelorette. We love that show, and one of the... I know, it's good. One of the most uh, memorable moments was when Hunter and Thomas got into a heated argument about whether Thomas was on the show for the right reasons. <laughs> if, if you missed it, don't worry, because here to reenact that scene with actual lines from the show are The Roots' own Tariq and Questlove. Thanks, Jimmy. Uh, tonight, I'll be playing Hunter, a 34-year-old single father from Texas, who's concerned that Thomas is only here for fame, not to find love like I am. And I'll be playing Thomas, a 28-year-old real estate broker from California who doesn't feel like he's doing anything wrong. Very good, guys, whenever you're ready. So, uh... I hear the conversations that are taking place with you and other people, and there's this flipping and flopping and constant smiles. I mean, <laughs> it, feels, it feels almost like a campaign, you know, like, like you want to be Bachelor. I mean, is that something you thought about? I would never do anything to hurt you, so to feel that I come across in any way that is, this is the result. See, I see? That's the problem. Now, I feel manipulated. It just makes me really worry about Katie because you could be doing the same thing with her. And I, and I would like to know, have you ever thought maybe I could end up being The Bachelor? I want to say I appreciate you for being so... Has <laughs> being The Bachelor crossed your mind? <laughs> I don't have the right answer. So, is that your answer? Yes? You were thinking about being a bachelor. Is that what you were saying? Uh, look, be before coming here, I didn't know what to expect. I'm not asking what you expected. <laughs> was being the bachelor... Was that a prerogative for you? <laughs> Okay, I can't be disingenuine to you guys, and I'm not going to be. So, yes, coming into this, this I, I had thoughts in my mind if I was potentially going to be the, the next Bachelor. Like, that's messed up.
Ooh, that was emotional. Wow. <laughs> Uh, so, some business news. Coors just launched a new ice cream that is infused with their hard seltzer. Yeah. They didn't pitch that on Shark Tank. They pitched that on Drunk Tank. Oh. Uh, you, you'll know it's good when the ice cream truck accidentally pulls up in your front lawn. <laughs> and finally, I saw that NASA sent dozens of baby squid from Hawaii to the International Space Station for research. I, and I also heard that the mission is being led by Commander Matthew Calamari. <laughs> Last night, Senate Republicans used the filibuster to block a major voting rights bill called the For the People Act. Yep, Democrats wanted things like automatic voter registration and election day to be the national holiday, while Republicans wanted every polling place to be at a yacht club. <laughs> and that's right, they blocked the For the People Act. Senate Republicans haven't been this happy since Kenny G started touring again. <laughs> you can tell a lot of Republican senators are ashamed that they blocked the voting rights bill because now they're scared to be seen in public. In fact, some of them are even using body doubles. For, for example, Senator Ben Sass is using his body double, SpongeBob. <laughs> for, I mean, it's getting that serious. It's... Next up here, Senator Roy Blunt. His body double is Jack Nicholson's Joker. <laughs> he doesn't want to be seen. Wow. That's crazy. Senator Roger Marshall is using his body double, a pack of chiclets. <laughs> I mean, they don't want to be... They don't want to be seen. Senator Rick Scott is using his body double, a human thumb. <laughs> and <it's> just... <laughs> Walking around. Oh, oh my gosh. Finally, of course, Mitch McConnell is using his body double, Toby Turtle. And I mean, just, it's just, just to be safe. And... Well, listen to this. I read that Ivanka Trump and Jared Kushner are trying to distance themselves from former President Trump because they're tired of him complaining about losing the election. <laughs> when he heard that one of his kids wanted distance, Trump was like, please be Eric, please be Eric. <laughs> Well, this was fun. During his weekly address, Pope Francis had a surprise guest in the audience. Watch this. Presentarsi in alcune occasioni come gli unici possessori della verità. I puri. Spider-Man. <laughs> Vatican security was like, hey, I know we said everyone should wear a mask, but this is taking it to a whole new level. Yeah, uh, the visit ended when Spider-Man kissed the Pope's ring upside down. Oh. It was kind of awesome. Well, Tinder rolled out a new feature yesterday called Hot Takes, which lets singles chat before matching. And this is cool. As an added bonus, they're providing users with a list of things that you should avoid saying during this introductory chat. <laughs> For instance, things such as, only three more days until this ankle monitor comes off. <laughs> Don't say that. Don't say it. Don't start with it, at least, yeah. Or how about this one? Oh, what do you know about starting insurance fires? <laughs> It's called Tinder. Yeah. yeah. And finally, this one here. It's crazy, but this is the only dating app that hasn't banned me. Just, <laughs> you shouldn't say those things. Open up. Give it a little time. Some more business news. I saw that budget airline Frontier recently added a COVID recovery charge of $1.59 to passengers' tickets. $1.59 might not sound like a lot, but on Frontier, that's a round trip to Orlando. <laughs> And finally, Sam Adams is offering to pay a $10,000 wedding bar tab for couples who include Sam Adams Summer Ale in their wedding vows. <laughs> this is great. Uh, half the grooms in Boston already planned on saying it, but now they might get paid. <laughs> Not to be outdone, uh, you can also win 10% off the cocktail hour if the priest yells, Hebrew National Pigs in a Blanket. <laughs> this is very exciting. Today, New York ended its pandemic state of emergency. But unfortunately, that also means the end of to-go cocktails. No! Marking the first time anyone's been nostalgic for 2020. Uh, <laughs> it's too bad. I'm really going to miss seeing delivery guys balance yardstick margaritas on their e-bikes. <laughs> Speaking of New York, the state just suspended Rudy Giuliani from practicing law because of... Because there's repeated false and misleading statements about the election. 
Even Rudy was like, what the hell took you so long? <laughs> you know you've crossed a line when other lawyers are like, this guy lies way too much. <laughs> it's a mixed bag for Rudy. The bad news, he can't practice law in New York. The good news, he can't defend himself at his next trial. <laughs> Meanwhile, when the news about Rudy broke, his son, Andrew, released a video statement. Uh, watch this. As you may have heard recently, a uh, few, few minutes ago, my father's law license was suspended by the New York State First Appellate Division of the Supreme Court. This is unacceptable, and I stand by my father. Top 20% of his body stands with his father. <laughs> what did he use to film that? A truck's rear view camera? It's like, put it in reverse and hit record. Hey, all the way the ground. <laughs> Rudy saw his son giving a speech in a ran random parking lot and was like, I taught him so well. <laughs> Some more legal news. A 49-year-old woman from Indiana just became the first person to be sentenced for storming the Capitol receiving three years of probation and a $500 fine. Yeah, the woman said she learned her lesson and hopes Trump pardons her when he's reinstated as president in August. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh. Hey, here's some good news today. After meeting with a bipartisan group of senators, President Biden finally announced that they had a deal on infrastructure. Yeah. Right now, New Yorkers are thinking, okay, now team up and let's save to-go cocktails. Let's go. That's the real... Let's get to the... Come on! That's right, Republicans and Democrats working together. Amazing. It's like one of those YouTube videos of a lion making friends with a squirrel, you know? It's, it's possible. The compromise was actually not that difficult. All it took was hard work, determination, and a blow dart to Mitch McConnell's neck. Well, I've been hit. Well, the president held a press conference to discuss the big infrastructure deal, which brings us to a new piece called Joe Biden, Whisperer in Chief. And you said when people are waiting for relief. Yes. I got them $1.9 trillion relief so far. So she might have. I wrote the bill <laughs> on the environment. Employers can't find workers. I said, yeah. <laughs> Love it. Wow. <laughs> he closed by saying, if you build it, they will come. <laughs> well, some business news after disappointing sales, Dunkin' Donuts has pulled the Beyond Meat breakfast sandwich from their national menu. Oh. Yeah, Dunkin' was shocked plant-based foods didn't appeal to the same customers who eat strawberry frosting for breakfast. <laughs> Some more business news. I, I read a headline today that kind of confused me. It said, T-Mobile released its own 5G-inspired gym. <laughs> Which brings us to a segment we like to call, uh, I Have Some Questions. I have some questions. First up, uh, why is a phone company releasing its own gin? <laughs> Actually, hold on. What does it mean to be 5G-inspired? <laughs> like, does the gin taste like a 5G network? Wait. Back up. What, where would I even buy T-Mobile gin? Do I have to track down a T-Mobile store? And if so, do they offer unlimited gin plans? <laughs> Follow up. Is it cheaper if my whole family is on the same gin plan? <laughs> but what if my wife doesn't like gin? What if my kids love gin? And again, what is 5G inspired? I just have so many questions. Just like so many questions. And finally, a new survey found that nearly half of American men experimented with their look last year. <laughs> Experimenting with your look is one way of putting it. I mean, guys were cutting their hair with nail clippers. <laughs> well, guys, in a speech last night, former Vice President Mike Pence made his clearest effort yet to distance himself from Trump by saying he was proud to certify the election. Wow. That's a whole different side of Pence. Next, he says he wants to be Grand Marshal of the Pride Parade. I mean, it's, it's amazing what's happening to him. Meanwhile, Trump can't believe Pence turned against him. 
He was like, boy, just when you think you know a guy that you sent an angry mob into the Capitol building to murder. <laughs> Pence also tried to lighten the mood by telling a joke, and he delivered it as only Mike Pence can. There was this farmer who decided to take his cow to market, so he loaded the cow and the truck and the dog and headed into town. But on his way there, there was a traffic accident. The cow and the truck went in one ditch, and the farmer and the dog went in the other. They ended up in court, and the attorney for the other driver was Questioning. Isn't it true that you said you never felt better in your life? He said, sir, would you like to explain the circumstances in which you made that comment? He said, yeah, I reckon I would. Me and the cow was in one ditch and the truck and the dog was in the other. And I seen the sheriff. And he walked over, he looked down at that dog, it had a broke back, it wasn't going to get better. And he got his revolver out and put it next to the dog's ear and he shot him. And again, he mercifully put his revolver to the forehead of that cow and pulled the trigger. And then that sheriff walked over to me and said, and how are you feeling? <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and Pence was like, oh, darn, I told her wrong. Let me try it again from the top. There was this farmer, uh, and, and he was in the ditch. And... What was that joke? Seriously, if you're looking to break up your 4th of July barbecue, tell that one. I mean, that's <laughs> shooting the duck. Broke back. Pulled his revolver out and aimed at the dog. He wasn't going to any It got worse when the camera panned out and it was just a group of preschool kids. Oh. And they go, oh. <laughs> Get this according to a new book uh, coming out. Trump made fun, apparently, of Rudy Giuliani for spitting during meetings. Oh. Yeah, and, and even told him that he sucked on TV. <laughs> Spitting, sucking, sweating, leaking. He's like every awful guy at Planet Fitness rolled into one guy, you know? <laughs> Rudy took it all in stride, though. He's like, look, he teases me, but at the end of the day, he also ruined my life. <laughs> Meanwhile, today, Vice President Kamala Harris made her first visit to the U.S.-Mexico border. Yes, she visited the border town of El Paso. Is it me or El Paso is not the best name for a border town? Yeah. <laughs> No Paso. <laughs> Some business news. Popeyes just introduced the new I don't know meal for people <laughs> who can't decide what to order. How can you be undecided when the entire menu has basically one thing? <laughs> Not like customers are thinking, should I have the fried chicken or the uh, sushi? What do you think? <laughs> I think I should have it at Popeyes. How fresh are the lobster tails? <laughs> and actually, uh, they offer the same meal at Arby's, only it's the cook who has no idea what's in it. Oh, there you go. I don't know. I have no idea. It's, it's, it's bleeding, whatever it is. So I don't know. It's something. Yes, sir. And get this. Astronomers have identified a, quote, extremely eccentric mini planet that just entered our solar system, and it's on course to pass by Earth. It's pretty exciting, but we were curious, what exactly is an extremely eccentric mini planet? So here now to talk about their trip is the extremely eccentric mini planet. Uh, this is... <laughs> oh my God, Jimmy, I can't believe I'm here. This is so random. That's not too random. We did invite you. Uh, totally. It's just that astronomers are always telling me I'm so eccentric. You know, first they'll be like, look at that normal planet over there. But then I'll be like, um, I'm not like the other planets. I'm a semi-amateur craft cocktail mixologist. Hello? Uh -huh. So, uh, exactly wh uh, what makes you an eccentric planet? Well, my taste in music is super eclectic. Like, sometimes I'll listen to Lady Gaga, but then sometimes I'll listen to, like, a podcast. <laughs> It's like my mind is on shuffle. Mm. <laughs> and that, and that, that classifies you as an extremely eccentric planet. Well, technically, it's because I'm so small. Because people, people are always telling me, oh my gosh, planet, you're so fit. And I'm like, um, you haven't seen me on Taco Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, maybe you could compare and contrast yourself with another planet. Well, well, sure. So, like, Mars is red and has a couple moons, right? Sure. Normal planet. Okay. Whereas I collect Funko Pop figurines and have a mustache tattoo on my index finger. <laughs> eccentric. Yeah, he's Excent very eccentric. Uh, I, I got it, I got it, I got it. Uh, give me another example, maybe. Or, or like, Earth has water 
and can sustain life, right? Yeah. Normal planet. Whereas I perform ukulele covers of rap songs on Periscope. <laughs> Extremely eccentric. Uh, one last thing. Uh, that's, not, <laughs> that's, not, <laughs> that's not your real accent, is it? No, it's completely fake. All right, good. Thank you very much. The extremely eccentric mini <laughs> 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 He's adorably eccentric. Yeah, adorably. Uh, and finally, earlier this week, police in Pennsylvania broke up an exorcism in the lumber aisle of a Home Depot. <laughs> 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 Yeah, an exorcism in the lumber aisle. Police laughed until the two-by-four projectile vomited. <laughs> uh, then they held a seance to summon a being from far beyond, a Home Depot employee. Does anyone work?